welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And welcome back to a bi-weekly wrap-up. I was sick for a week and I was not getting out of bed to do a video besides the fact I had that head cold that has been going around and I sounded more congested than I normally do. I have a deviated septum. I always sound congested to a point, but this was really bad. However, the nice thing about head colds is usually mentally I am still, like when I'm awake, I can still read. So in between sleeping, I was reading things. Of course, I read a lot of short things and that will be pretty evident, but I think I had two good weeks of reading here. So jumping on in, I'm going to lump these together. I read volumes 3, 4, and 5 of Delicious in Dungeon. This is continuing the journey of our adventurers as they are going to look for the red dragon and the main character's sister who was eaten by the dragon. And while they're doing that, because they don't have enough money for supplies, they're killing and eating the monsters in the dungeon. Each one has just like slowly raised the stakes and in the last one that I read, we even finally met the magician of the dungeon, though the characters did not realize it at the time. So that was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to continuing. I then read Hidden Figures, the true story of four black women, and this is the children's book version of this. And this looks at Dorothy Vaughn, Catherine Goebel, Mary Jackson, and Christine Darden, which if you've seen the movie, Christine's not in it because she's a different, she's like the next generation after the other women. And I, I loved the artwork in this book. It is beautiful. I really like how the artist used different texture, like pre, for like the prints of the dresses. However, the writing just came off very tell, tell, tell. And even the little vignettes that they shared, it was more like tell, telling me. And I was like, okay, so definitely a history book. And it's not a very interesting way to tell the information. So I didn't enjoy the writing of it. It's beautiful though. Then I finished Galaxy Cruise, The Maiden Voyage by Marcus Alexander Hart, which is one of the self-published science fiction contest new books that my team received. And... So I picked this up while I was sick. I'm When I'm sick, I'm looking for light. And this is a humorous sci-fi. It worked perfectly for me. It's also a space opera, which I, I do enjoy. But the premise of this is this human who is one of the only humans in space is a karaoke DJ, hates his job, has been saving enough money to go home, and a rich alien heiress comes who is fascinated with earth culture that the aliens have all gotten wrong and so she's chatting him up and someone else from her group comes and starts a fight breaks things and he inadvertently saves her and then she promotes him to be a cruise ship captain and while doing that also he ends up it ends up being a contest of who's going to have control of this company, her or the guy who who did screw everything up. He has to be this cruise ship captain, or Earth is going to be, not Earth, or Eagle Haven, which is the human colony's new home, is going to be turned into a sewage dump. And it's just wacky and zany. Hart did a really great job of keeping the main character consistent with his own ideologies and like his own personality and a lot of the crazy zany things that happen aren't aren't because of him he's trying to avoid them or get out of things and because all these alien species think humanity are stupid mammals they're not actually listening to him and chaos and hijinks ensue. 
and it was a lot of fun. It had a great arc for the main character, and I think a great arc overall for the story. And I am interested in continuing the series to find out what happens next. I'm also going to have a more full review coming up here in the future, since this is one of our contest books. I then finished Hidden Figures, The American Dream, and Untold Story of the Black Women Computers. My screen's too small. The Black, sorry, The Black Women Mathematicians Who Helped with the Space Race. Now this is the full nonfiction version of the children's book that I had read. And this one I actually read audio because I, I needed to reread it quickly. I was part of a chat talking about it um, over at Nia, the Vixen of Fiction, her channel. She does a program called Scripting the Book, where you look at a book and then the movie and discuss the changes, things. I liked both movie and book, and so I was listening to the audiobook in this. I was originally listening it as I drove places, but then when I got sick, I brought the CD inside and even worked on like a puzzle while I listened to it, which was fun. This is the part of history I really enjoy studying. It is about NACA, NASA. I really find this time period interesting, which is originally why I picked it up when the first time this came out. And so I really enjoyed getting to reread this. And it's interesting how this book focuses more on Dorothy Vaughn, I feel, especially because the book starts before NASA was existed. It starts during World War II. So Shatterly is really good about not only showing the history of these women, so she makes them feel very real to you, but you know talks about their jobs at NACA and NASA, but then also the political goings on around. Um, I learned so much about the early civil rights during World War II. That's not something we ever talked about in school. These are why these nonfiction history book biographies are important because they shine a light on what was happening in a full context. And I really enjoyed that view. I really like books like that. And then to finish off my bi-weekly reads, I read Fractals by D.L. Tillery. And this is a, this is actually a short story. And then it has some flash fiction, if I remember right. Yeah. And then it has two flash fictions. First off, I am not a horror person. So I was going into these a little more hesitantly. And I'm coming out the other side, not a horror person still. However, the original, like the beginning short story had a very interesting premise and I don't feel like it was fully fleshed out. I, I think it actually could have been longer. There were just some jumps in the story and I was confused on what was happening or why a character had gone from the, like thinking this and then all of a sudden they're over here thinking this. And it would, yeah. I'm also not, I also have a hard time with short stories just because I don't feel like they open everything up enough. And that is kind of where I am with this. So what I got, I, I liked, but I want more. And then I also read The Room Within by D.L. Tillery. It's same thing. I There was a lot of context things going on that I think because I'm not a horror reader, I didn't understand. Like at one point, the character in this mentioned uh, this is about the guy who buys a house. And then as he's exploring the house on his first day of ownership, finds this room within. And there's like a comment like, oh, I know why that door is green. But then he doesn't tell me, the reader, why the door is green. And I wonder if that's just a, something, a context, if you know horror. And since I don't, I was kind of like, well, at the end of the story, I'm still like, wait, so why was the green door important? What what does the green door mean? I, I, I want to know this still. So those are the things that I finished in these past two weeks. Only did a little bit of progress in Space Craze and only did a little bit of progress and crucible of hell because when I'm sick my brain does not do nonfiction very well unless obviously if it's audio audio it loved 
kind of makes me think I should probably do more nonfiction than audio. I might get through it faster. So then I was looking for like a comfort read with everything new that I had read. I just needed to kind of down process. So I picked up briefly Trading in Danger by Elizabeth Moon. This is one that I own and I read a couple of years ago for the first time. Really enjoyed it. I'm like four or five chapters in. When I do rereads, I, I tend to pick them up, put them down, pick them up, put them down because I already know the story. So I don't know how quickly I'm going to go through this, but I, ha I did start it again during this time period. And then for my next self-published science fiction contest, I have picked up The Pwn Away by Kirsten M. Corby. And this is a solar punk story. That's part of the title. <laughs> so this one, I don't think quite has given me what I thought I was getting from the description. It's a lot of telling you what is going on. And at the beginning of it, I've been very bored. We're following a journalist named Jake who lives on Pono, which is a artificial island construct where they're trying to be environmentally friendly and trying to take island, especially Polynesian, like values as a way of life and for society. And this is like post United States. Uh, so the United States has been divided into different territories with different ideologies for their governments and an eruption or yeah, and a vol volcanic eruption in the Cascade States, which is the west coast of North America. It, it takes out, it's Mount Rainier, it takes out Seattle, and the whole world is watching just like horrified. And because of everyone's like amount of social media and their little drone bots, you get to basically see people die. How fast this eruption has gone, it's just wiped out Seattle. In the around in the and the surrounding area and then while this chaos is going on and in the Nevada territory the Abrahamists a, a religious fundamentalist group has then invaded Vancouver and Los Angeles causing more refugee or causing refugees to then escape into the Pacific Ocean towards po where Pono is and end up at Pono. And so Jake is a journalist on Pono, like reporting on like what was happening in the world. And then as the refugees arrive, reporting on how that integration is going. And Jake himself is an immigrant to the island of Pono. And I guess there's some trauma there. It, it, like as I'm describing this, it in the tone I'm describing it, it probably sounds boring. That's kind of how the description of all of this beginning has been. The way it's written, I as a reader feel very distant from everything that is happening. And the main character, while he's reporting like, oh, you know, here are these stories. And then secretly in his head is like, I don't want the refugees here. You know, we can't support them. This isn't our way of life. And I'm just like, wait, what the you're an immigrant yourself and had to learn like the ways of this island what well you know and the whole well we my family came here legally we bought into the island and these guys are just showing up yeah because chaos is ensuing where they're from it, this is dense it's not a long book but it is dense and it's been taking me a while to read it I'm about an hour out and it's finally kind of started to pick up where the main character has done something stupid and now is dealing with the consequences of it afterwards. I'm not enjoying enjoying it. It's really a lot of I'm just going to tell you what's going on here and what's going on here and I'm just like wait why are you we're not getting to live with the characters you're just like shooting us information. So honestly this really is more of a social commentary wrapped up in a near future mindset. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Corby's like a futurist. And so she's thinking, oh, hey, here's a island society that can exist. And what would happen if you introduced it like chaos over here and so they had refugees? It, it's an interesting think piece, but not a very interesting story. 
my ebook says I have an hour left, so I will finish it because I do want to find out how does it end. And then last, I have picked up Full Moon by Jen Butcher. This is number two in the Dresden Files. I read Stormfront a couple years ago, and I was like, well, yeah, I, I said I wanted to continue this, and I've he heard lots of people talk about it. I know it's an ongoing series, so I'm not in a hurry to pick it up. So I am most of the way through it. Uh, full moon, yes, it has werewolves in it. <laughs> and if you don't know anything about the Dresden Files, Harry Dresden is a wizard residing in Chicago, and he consults with the police department. And yeah, helps them solve crimes and murders. So I'll be finishing this this week. I'll be finishing The Pono Way. And not sure what I am planning on picking up next. For the self-published science fiction contest, I think next I'll pick up Light Blade by Zamil Akhtar. But for my own personal reads, I'm not sure what I'm going to pick up next. I'm definitely just going to allow myself to mood read into March. <laughs> I was sick and I haven't written. You know, my brain allowed me to function enough to read because reading doesn't actually take a lot of mental attention for me. Writing does, so have not been writing. Other media, because I am reading The Crucible of Hell, which is about Okinawa, it had me then thinking of the Pacific War, and the movie Operation Petticoat by Cary Grant and Tony Curtis. And so I went and watched that. Really enjoyed it. And there's a part at the beginning where somebody asked if some orders are from Admiral Nimitz, and thanks to this book, I now know who, who Admiral Nimitz is. And always I had been hearing that name wrong. So... I thought that was funny. I shared that with my husband. He just kind of shook his head at me. I'm like, well, I have not done a lot of research into World War II. It's just not the area of history that I am most interested in. So I watched that, and that's an oldie and a goodie for my family. I watched Hidden Figures twice. That was on Amazon Freebie, so like just a few commercials, and I felt that was worth it really enjoyed the movie. It does annoy me a little bit at the end, the drama that they build up for John Glenn's flight. It, it, it was a real occurrence. His, he, the indicator light did come on saying that the, there was a problem with the heat shield and ended up later after they recovered the capsule, they found out it was just a, the, a problem with the indicator light. The heat shield was fine, but they didn't know that at the time. So that part was real, but the kind of the drama with the music swelling up made me think of Apollo 13 when they do that drama music swell. I also thought it was interesting that all the white characters are amalgamations of the characters from the book, and none of the names are who they actually are for the white characters, which I think very much focuses the movie on the the three main women, so that they are the heroes. And there's some other changes. If you want to hear more of my thoughts about this, I'm going to leave a link down below to the panel I, I participated on for scripting the book. I had a lot of fun doing that. My husband and I finished Vox Machina, the second season. Loved it. Right as you kind of, they ended on a kind of a sweet note, and then the stakes got raised. So I, I'm enjoying just how they're doing storytelling with this animated TV series. If you haven't watched it yet, like I said, the the episodes are 30 minutes long, but they are so much fun and you should go watch them. And then finally, after getting caught up on my Writing Excuses podcast, they did a deep dive talking about the Spare Man, which one of the influences was the movie, The Thin Man. And then that has William Powell and Myrna Loy, and I love that movie. And so I went and watched that recently as well. Just the beats of that mystery comedy and the 
relationship of the married couple. It's a win-win all over the board for me. It was the type of movies that I was raised on, and so definitely love that one. <laughs> So that has been my bi-weekly wrap-up. I am feeling so much better and looking forward to doing more reading and doing more watching and doing more writing. I hope that you have not been sick and if you have been sick like I was, I hope that you are getting over it really fast. It's been a couple of years since I've been sick myself thanks to having to wear masks for my job anyway. So this was kind of a nasty surprise. <laughs> and I was not uh, amused, but yeah. I look forward to continuing on better health and reading more this next week. Thank you and have a great day.